Hi guys, it's uh, 8 -bit Dude here with some uh, good news as finally 8-bit Unity release 0 0.4.0 is ready for download from the 8-bit Unity website. It's been uh, quite a few months that I've been trying to tidy up loose ends on this uh, new release. Um, the main features are basically support for a scrollable uh, character map. Uh, meaning also here tile maps. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, this sprites multiplexing on the Atari, which uh, increase the maximum number of sprites, uh, but also greatly improves the visuals in that uh, the sprites don't need to be flickering all the time anymore. Uh, they only flicker when more than four sprites overlap on the same row. Uh, there's now single and double high resolution support on the Apple II, uh, which opens the door for releasing game on 64K version uh, for people who don't have the uh, 84, 80 column card expansion. And there's a new tech demo called 8 bit Dungeon. So let's look uh, into a little bit more detail at each of those. Let's start with the scrollable character maps. The application I chose for this purpose is called Sharpad. Uh, Sharpad is originally an application for the C64, uh, but I found a way to export uh, the maps from Sharpad to all the supported platform in 8-bit Unity. So basically, uh, Sharpad will allow you to create a character set, and there is a limit of 128 characters, uh, which is basically tied to the limit uh, enforced on the Atari. It's in principle possible to add up to 256 on the other platforms, uh, but of course that would break the sort of continuity of trying to uh, produce something once and export to a platform. But it's possible anyway to go up to 256 on other platforms uh, than the Atari. There is uh, here at the bottom, you can see uh, one character, so one selected here, so you can apply uh, colors from the palette here. So at first you're going to be, going to be limited to the uh, Commodore palette, uh, which allows you uh, to have four colors with one color, uh, which is inter interchangeable uh, from one character to another. Uh, but later on, when you export your character set, you will be able to then do uh, color editing uh, for each platform. Of course, you can organize those characters into tiles. So here, a size of two by two is shown. Uh, it's possible to go three by three, four by four, etc. The advantage being that uh, for each element of this map, if it corresponds to a tile that is two by two or three by three or four by four, uh, you can create much larger maps uh, without filling up your memory, which of course on 8-bit system is the main limit uh, you are up against. So now you've created uh, your character map, you want to, to do the, the export. So you're going to start by exporting your tile set and your character map. Uh, this will be uh, basically uh, binary files, which are going to be common for all platforms. And what you're going to have to do a little bit extra work is on the character set. So the individual 128 characters making up your character set. When you export from Sharpad, you're going to get something like this image shown, uh, which corresponds to the Commodore palette. And what you're going to have to do is simply to apply in GIMP the palettes that correspond to other platforms, uh, like the Atari, uh, the Apple in single or double high resolution mode, as well as the Lynx and the Auric. So the Lynx and the Auric have one extra step that you have to also change the resolution uh, of the character set. And once that's done, well, basically that's it. You can just run the same code and that will allow you to render uh, your scrollable map. And I have included uh, in the demo disk uh, a new section on character maps uh, where in just basically 10, 15 lines of code, you load the map, the tiles, uh, the character set, and then you just use the joystick to scroll around the map.
We come now to the uh, next important feature, which is sprite multiplexing on the Atari. Previously, there was a limit of eight sprites, and those were basically two sets of four sprites, uh, which would be flickered between one set and the other, every other frame of the Atari. So that didn't look too nice because uh, basically they would be half transparent against the background. Um, so I really thought we have to improve things and there was a lot of information available uh, on the internet on the topic of uh, DLI multiplexing where basically uh, you set some lines whilst the screen is being displayed and that allows you to reallocate the position and color of sprites. So then you can fill up, uh, say sprite one will be taking care of one color in this sprite and then a bit, a little bit lower down, this sprite number one will be displaying this little guy here. And then when you go further down, it'll be displaying this other little guy. So each one has got its own uh, pixel data and color. And with this solution, uh, I've put a limit for now of three banks of four sprites. So that's 12 single color sprites. And of course, Inside those 12 single colors, if you use two sprites, you can get what's called a multicolor sprite, which gives you three color. Basically, where the colors of the first and second sprite overlap, you get a bonus third color. And it's possible to do this in combination. So you can see in this screen, I've got one multicolor sprite and eight single color sprite. And they're all displayed very nice uh, without any flicker. Of course, once you start moving, this little guy, uh, our hero, if he's going to come in the line of the skeletons, well, you'll start to see a little bit of the transparency effect. Uh, that can be helped, that's the limit of the platform. Uh, next uh, feature we come to is the support for single and double eye resolution on the Apple II. So up till now, uh, 8-bit Unity uh, gave access to the double high resolution mode, uh, which you know, can give you a rather pleasant rendering because you have 16 colors available. The trouble is you need 128K of RAM, uh, which not all systems have access to, especially the earlier Apples, like the Apple II Plus, the Apple IIe without the 80 column card. Those systems only have 64K of RAM. So I finally got round to implementing the so-called single high resolution mode, uh, where you only have a palette of six colors. Uh, this is of course give more basic visuals, but the advantage is that it will run now on, on all 64K uh, Apple II. Now we come to talking about the new tech demo, 8-bit dungeon. So this is just to showcase really the scrollable map support. And as you can see here, you've got uh, very close visuals for all the versions supported by 8-bit uh, Unity. So you're just going to go around a dungeon, uh, open tombs, fight a bunch of monsters, and find a key that will allow you to unlock access to the next level. Of course, there's only one level. This is just a tech demo, uh, but I hope in time uh, to grow this into something that will be a little bit more uh, consequential. So it might eventually make uh, for a full game, uh, but we'll see how that goes in the future. So what will be next um, now that Really 0 0.4.0 is out of the way. Uh, I'm going to have time to start new stuff. And the next target I want to integrate is going to be the NES, or also called Famicom in Japan. Uh, this is a very interesting platform because it has very good sprite support. And of course, it's very it's made from the beginning to work with shower maps. So the crawlable shower map code is going to be very well used on this platform. And the other objective is to uh, add support on the 8-bit hub for the Apple II. Uh, so far, the 8-bit hub has been working with the Lynx and the Auric, and I've already sold quite a few of those. Uh, 
Uh, the Apple II is the next target. It's going to be very nice for people, for example, who have an Apple IIc, uh, on which, the, of course, the Usenet card is not available. Uh, 8 bit Unity up till now offered networking through the Usenet card. Uh, well, now you will have the 8 bit hub as a new option for getting online, connecting joysticks, and connecting a, a PS2 mouse SD card, all of this stuff on your Apple IIc. And there will also be, of course, a cable interface for the more standard super serial card, uh, which works on the Apple II Plus, IIc, uh, IIe, etc. Okay, so 8-bit uh, Unity 0.4.0 is available right now. And if you find that this work is useful to you or uh, you would like to contribute something, uh, you can always visit my Patreon page. If you look on Patreon for 8-Bit Dude, uh, you will see it's possible to support this effort with as little as uh, $5 per month. Um, every little bit helps. You know, I've got some you know, ongoing costs like running the web server, as well as uh, getting all the necessary hardware for testing this stuff. So, you know, any, any little bit helps. Thanks in advance, guys, and I'll see you soon for the next version of ABIT Unity in the coming months.